Hello and welcome to another GCSE Computer Science video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on the effects of computer-based implants on society. Computer-based implants are used in various fields of medicine, as well as by people known as body hackers. Let's take a look at some examples. Cochlear implants have been able to partially restore hearing for some people with no or limited hearing. Cochlear implants bypass the damaged part of the ear and stimulate the hearing nerve directly, enhancing the clarity of sounds. The pacemaker has long been used for patients with defective hearts. They provide artificial stimulation to ensure the heart continues to beat at the correct pace. People who have diabetes can have an insulin pump implanted, which consists of sensors and a device that dispenses insulin at and when it is needed, effectively acting like an artificial pancreas. Brain implants are an emerging technology where electronic devices are implanted into the brain. In 2023, a paralysed man was able to walk again with the aid of a brain implant connected directly to nerves in his spine. Brain computer interface can allow paralysed people to control a computer with their brain. In an increasingly digital world, this could return a large amount of autonomy to people who couldn't otherwise use a computer. Ethical concerns have been raised over the use of monkeys in research at the company Neuralink. The company admits that some monkeys died during testing, but denies mistreatment. The complications surrounding the ethics of human testing mean that Neuralink and other firms in the field are only just starting to receive approval for human trials. Biohacking, also called body hacking, is augmenting your body with digital additions. People have implanted a range of devices such as RFID chips that can be programmed to open doors, unlock phones, make payments and more, a device to allow the wearer to sense where north is, and headphones implanted directly into the ear. Most people are comfortable with implants to improve the lives of those with disabilities. But as implants improve and become better than the human equivalent, should people be able to get cyborg parts? If so, how would the inequality of access to these likely very expensive parts affect society? What about the military? Do we want an army full of bio-enhanced soldiers? Would you buy a memory expansion pack if you could get your memory expanded in the mall in under an hour? What about something that speeds up your mental processing? Would you let someone put something in your brain so that you could think quicker or better? There are clearly still many ethical questions to be answered. There are also a number of legal and practical concerns surrounding computer-based implants, such as what if implanted devices were hacked? Hackers may be able to cause them to malfunction or retrieve sensitive data. How is the data that these devices produce protected from hacking? Who would be to blame if a brain-controlled prosthesis malfunctioned and injured a third party? What types of biohacking should be legal and for whom? Should we allow people to do whatever they like? What if it led to super-powered criminals? This is just a sample of some of the concerns around computer-based implants. As with a lot of technology, the law appears to be playing catch-up. That brings us to the end of this video on the effect of computer-based implants on society. Join me again soon when I'll be looking at the effects of autonomous vehicles on society. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise computer science. And until next time, it's bye for now.